Welcome to Hope from History, where the ancestors teach, yes you can, because yes we did. Addie Banks presents early black entrepreneurs who have a history and business story to share. The Life and Most Unusual Times of William Thomas Jones President of Tyson and Jones Buggy Company in Cothridge, North Carolina. We begin his story at the end. It is 1910 and the citizens of Cothridge grieve his passing. The Cothridge Blade newspaper describes Joan as, quote, a citizen regarding in all respects as probably the peer of any living or dead in usefulness, in accomplished purpose, and withal in the example and model which he has left the present and future generations, end quote. Colonel Jones was known and acknowledged around the country, was brother-in-law to U.S. Marshal Claudius Dockery. He was survived by his wife, Florence Dockery, daughter of Colonel Oliver H. Dockery, and would receive the colonel's pension. William T. Jones was clearly a respected and honored member of the Cothridge community, respected throughout the state and country. He socialized with the white elite of Moore County during the 1880s. He entertained them when he hosted his annual holiday party, and they attended. He married twice, Sophia Isabella McLean and... Florence Dockery, both white women, and Dockery was a daughter of a prominent Apex North Carolina family. Jones was a religious man and member of the Methodist Church, where he taught Sunday school classes. In addition to being a mover and shaker in town, Jones was a wealthy businessman and Confederate Army colonel. This is his story. Jones was a mulatto, born in Elizabethton in Bladen County, North Carolina, on April 8, 1833. His father, Ambrose Jones, was plantation owner. His mother, Elizabeth, was his slave. His father was married to a white woman, and they had several children. As was sometimes true, white fathers freed and educated slave children. This was the case with William. Not much is known about his early years, but as a young man, Jones was found working his trade in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He was a carriage painter who invented the solution used for waterproofing. While working there, he caught the attention of Thomas Tyson and Alexander Kelly, buggy factory owners in Cothridge, North Carolina. They were so impressed with Jones' work that they invited him to return to Cothridge as an employee. This was 1857. His work record made promotions come quickly. Within two years, he was promoted to shop supervisor. Tyson, Kelly, and company gave Jones entire charge of the vehicle part of their business, his innovations in large business and trade. Then, the Civil War. Jones was listed as a 27-year-old mechanic when he enlisted on September 12, 1861 in Moore County after factory production was paused. Like many other workers, Jones volunteered with the 35th North Carolina Regiment to serve in the Confederate Army. This is his war record, appointed third lieutenant on September 12, 1861 present and accounted for during January to May 1862, reported absent sick in October 1862, promoted to first lieutenant on May 24, 1864, captured near Petersburg, Virginia, June 17, 1864, transferred back to Hilton Head on an unspecified date, transferred to Fort Delaware, where he arrived on March 12, 1865, released on June 16, 1865, after taking the Oath of Allegiance. Jones was an immortal 600, 
meaning a white Confederate officer who could not be exchanged. Jones, ever the entrepreneur, even while a prisoner of war, had business on his mind. While walking from camp to camp with the Union Army, he began picking up potato peelings and he saved breadcrumbs to make homemade moonshine. He sold his moonshine to the prison guards and local townspeople and was paid in Union currency. At the conclusion of the Civil War, Colonel Jones came back to North Carolina with a estimated $3,000 in his pocket. The town only held worthless Confederate money. Colonel Abraham Fullerton of the 63rd Tennessee Infantry was also one of the immortal 600. He wrote, The prisoners occupied their time in a variety of ways, many of them at cards. Debating societies were organized. Moot Court's institution, for there were many lawyers among us. The invective genius of the prisoners was developed to a high degree. One man constructed a still and actually made whiskey without being detected. The product of his still was not a superior quality, but was always in demand at high figures. He wrote about Jones. Sherman had marched through Carthage and left much devastation. The people were hungry and jobless. There was no money to reopen the carriage factory. The only man in town with real money was William T. Jones. Was he the solution? Yes. Jones bankrolled reopening the buggy company with his moonshine money, and he took a leadership position there. But Jones also rolled up his sleeves and went to work. On the first Monday of each month, he and a team saddled up the horses and mules and started the week-long buggy transport trek to Bennettsville, South Carolina, for their big sales day. Buggies were hitched together and pulled by beasts. Soon, cartridge buggies were known far and wide. In their advertising, we read, We feel confident that with the close attention we give the business together with the materials used, the skilled workmen employed by manufacturing, first-class work. No house in the country can excel us in style, finish, durability, and low prices. In 1873, Tyson and Jones bought out Kelly and renamed the company Tyson and Jones Buggy Company. Jones held the position of company president. In 1876, they produced 400 buggies. They incorporated in 1889. With the expansion of the railroads in the 1880s, they took advantage of better transport to expand business. At its maximum production, Tyson and Jones constructed 3,000 carriages a year. Jones was a business progressive. He visited northern factories to learn about mass production machinery and methods. He bought a steam engine and boiler, circular saws, drills, and other machines. The wooden factory building was replaced by a massive multi-level brick structures. Tyson and Jones employed more than 100 workers to run production lines. The assembly lines moved from upper floors down to lower levels towards a finished carriage. They made at least seven different models of horse-drawn buggies. In their advertising and catalogs, there are pictures of white men assembling wheels on the line, but Jones' photograph never appeared in them. Jones was known nationwide as a pioneer of manufacturing techniques and business savvy. In 1895, the company exhibited their products in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Cotton States Exposition. Imagine the work involved in creating a display to be viewed by thousands of international attendees and getting vehicles from North Carolina to Georgia. I wonder if Jones met Booker T. Washington there. This was the exposition where he gave his famous Atlanta Compromise speech. He was likely fair enough to pass as white. It was written in the Blade newspaper. 
As evidence of the high position Mr. Jones attained in the world of carriage builders, that this group represented the brainiest and most successful businessmen in America, Jones was elected a number of times vice president of the Carriage Builders National Association. The newspaper writes that the fine presence and bearing of Mr. Jones made him a conspicuous figure in any gathering, that there was not a more popular man in the Carriage Builders National Association. For the last 30 years, he has been an active and influential member and is widely known all over the United States. He is listed in the 1872 BNA directory. Jones was a local leader who also sought statewide influence as candidate for office in 1902 as a Republican. A flyer was found that urged voters to support Colonel W.T. Jones of Cartridge for the State House, one of the captains of industry of our state. The campaign was unsuccessful. In 1910, Jones and his partner Tyson died of natural causes. One of Jones' disappointments was never having children. He built a large house hoping to fill them with children. Therefore, Tyson's heirs ran the business until 1924 when the car replaced the horse and carriage. Did the people know that Jones was black when marrying white was illegal? Evidence suggests that this was the town's secret. Each year, Cartridge celebrates the Buggy Festival, and a town mirror openly proclaims respect for Jones, their black city leader.